consider the following problem. We want to find the Fresnel star frame of the curvature of the parametrized curve, r of t equal to cosine of t over square root of 2, 2 minus sine of t, cosine of t over square root of 2. Not only will this give us a workout for doing these types of calculations, but we'll also take a look at the pictures and interpret our answers. Now recall, the Fresnel start frame, okay, that's going to be built out of, okay, we have the unit tangent, so r prime over the length of r prime, the principal unit normal, so it'll be t prime over the length of t prime, the binormal, which is just t cross n, and the curvature, which is length of t prime over length of r prime. Now, before we do any calculating, let's note some things to expect from our answers. So first I know we have x and z equal to each other. Okay, if I push everything to one side, we get the equation x minus z equal to zero. Okay, it's implicit that y can be anything, so we're gonna have a plane. And if we put a zero y in there, this is gonna have normal direction, one, zero, minus one. Next, we note, okay, we identify our items as coordinates x, y, and z. We'll also have that our entries satisfy the equation of a sphere. So we have an intersection of a plane and a sphere, which is always going to be a circle. So we'll see that when we do the pictures. Okay, that's also going to have some impact on our calculations. Finally, I also have 2x squared plus y minus 2 squared equal to 1, which is the equation of an elliptic cylinder. And we'll see when we cut this elliptic cylinder with the plane, Okay, we're not going to get an ellipse, well, we're going to get a perfect circle. Let's calculate. Recall, if we take the derivative of a vector function, we're just taking derivatives term by term. So here, cosine goes to minus sine, sine goes to cosine, cosine goes to minus sine. If we take the length of this vector, okay, we get one. So the unit tangent is just r prime. To find the principal unit normal, Okay, we take the derivative of the unit tangent. Okay, so here, sine goes to cosine, cosine goes to minus sine, sine goes to cosine. Again, we have the length of our derivative is equal to one. So our principal unit normal is just gonna be equal to derivative of t. Now, if we're checking our work, what we'll want, the length of t and n both have to be equal to one. They're gonna be unit vectors. And we'll also want that if we take the dot product of t and n, we get zero. Okay, these vectors are going to be orthogonal to one another. For the binormal, we'll take the cross of t and n. Okay, and the way I'll do it here is using the six diagonals trick. So what we'll do is we'll load into the top row i, j, k. Second row, we'll put t. Third row, we'll put n. I put this matrix next to itself. And then I'm going to multiply along the diagonals. So the diagonals going to the right, okay, we'll multiply down the first three, keep the signs. For the next three diagonals going to the left, we'll multiply down, we change the signs, and then we add all of those terms. So what we'll note here when we do the work, okay, we're gonna get this vector here, one over square root of two, zero, minus one over square root of two, and that's just gonna be a multiple of the normal vector for the plane. Again, if we're checking things, we note the binormal has length one, and the binormal is orthogonal to both t and n. So these three vector functions are mutually orthogonal, so they make a frame. For some geometric interpretation, let's first note, okay, we've seen the binormal is always a multiple of the normal vector for our plane. So this circle lives in the plane. So if we take the best fitting plane, okay, that's a span of t and n, that's just gonna be the plane itself. So if we're 
perpendicular to the best fitting plane for a curve, okay? In other words, if we're pointing away from the circle or out from the circle, we have to be pointing out from the plane. So these are multiples of one another. Next, okay, if we compute the curvature, okay, we're gonna take the length of T prime over the length of R prime. Okay, we've seen that both of these are equal to one. So the curvature is equal to one. Now remember, what's the curvature? That's just gonna be one over the radius of the best fitting circle to our curve. Okay, that circle is gonna live in the best fitting plane spanned by T and N. Now we note our curve is actually a circle, so it's gonna be its own best fitting circle. And so since that circle is radius one, curvature has to be one over one or one itself. So that checks out also.